appreciate it. I want you to remember that no bastard ever won war by dying for his country. He won it by making the other poor dumb bastard die for his country. Transmitting high atop of Florida's peninsula, this is Alpha Mike, and you are listening to episode 212, General Maxine. Today's episode, you wanted to hear the great general speak. No, it wasn't the one that just played. He was in the old America, the greatest general that ever lived. No, this is the reset Bolshevik states of woke General Maxine. We're going to focus on what she said. What happens if we do not get, get what you just told? What should the people do? What should protesters on the street do? I didn't hear you. What happens? What should protesters do? Well, we, we got to stay on the street. Uh, and we've got to get more active. We've got to get more confrontational. We've got to make sure that they they know that we mean business. I know this. We've got to stay in the street. And we've got to, we've got to demand justice. As a black man, despite all of the efforts... I feel like nothing changes. And George Floyd is waking so many people up. Yet nothing has happened just, you know, despite the rhetoric. Like what, what needs to happen that's different this year than all the years before? We're looking for a guilty verdict. We're looking for a guilty verdict. And we're looking to see if all of the fault that took place and has been taking place after they saw what happened to George Floyd, if nothing does not happen, then we know uh, that we've got to not only stay in the street, but we've got to fight for justice. But I am very hopeful, and I hope uh, that we're going to get a verdict that is say guilty, guilty, guilty. And there you have it. General Maxine cackling like an old hen, raising the flag and motivating the Bolshevik army out in the streets for confrontation and demanding a guilty verdict or else. This is part of the reset, my friends. Now, of course, you know and I know that we've been told by the left that Donald Trump, better known as 45, on January 6th of 2021, he raised a flag and motivated the troops to storm the Capitol. He was brought up on charges of that and acquitted because the evidence just didn't stick. When they played back some of the evidence, they heard 45 say, peaceful demonstration, peacefully. But not General Maxine, no way. She's riding in the wind not taking any hostages and moving forward. So the double standard has been laid in front of every American citizen, all 320 million plus, and not a freaking thing will happen to General Maxine. She'll get away with it. Your speech matters. You should always hold others accountable on their speech as well as your own. The left refuses to prosecute or move towards Maxine's words. They're saying, oh, come on. She's just passionate about this. Really? 
All 320 million witnesses are watching. And I can assure you that there are a lot rooting and supporting for General Maxine. But there are many, many more million up in arms and saying the BS needs to stop and stop today. We're going to talk about speech and the importance of it. And you're probably wondering, what happened to the word of the week? Well, we're going to have the word of the week. We're going to close out with the word of the week. Because I didn't want to mix the word of the week with pure garbage. That Maxine, General Maxine, is brewing out of her little hen peck beak. So I decided to throw it at the end. The accountability of speech is important. The Republicans now are going to try to bring up charges. It won't go anywhere. You know that and I know that. But the 320 million Americans are sitting there in amazement saying, what gives? The Great Reset is upon us. Now let's talk, let's talk a, a little bit about a great general and the speech that he has done in his past. Now I'm not going to play it on video. I'm going to read parts of it for you to understand. The greatest general in the United States history was General George Patton, which no matter how much the government did everything in its power to keep him out of particular particular battles in World War II, he kept on persevering, doing what Patton wanted to do. Old blood and guts was a big factor in the win of the Second World War for the United States of America. And I want to take the opportunity now to to read some of his words. Back in the day when he read these things, it was scandalous in the media. But most Americans didn't really give a hoot what the media wrote. George S. Patton, you see, he was a star. June 5th, 1944, somewhere in England, George Patton said, Men, this stuff that some sources single around about Americans wanting out of this war is not wanting not wanting to fight is a crock of bullshit. Americans love to fight traditionally. All real Americans love the sting and clash of battle. You are here today for three reasons. First, because you are here to defend your home and your loved ones. Second, you are here for your own self-respect because you would not want to be anywhere else. And third, you are here because you are real men and real men like to fight. When you hear everyone of you when you were kids you all admired the champion marble player the fast runner the fastest runner the toughest boxer the big league ball player and all American football players Americans love a winner Americans will not tolerate a loser Americans despite cowards Americans play to win all of the time. I wouldn't give a hoot in hell for a man who lost and laughed. That's why Americans have never lost nor will ever lose a war for their very idea of losing is hateful to an American. He goes on to say,
my men don't surrender, and I don't want to hear of any soldier under my command being captured unless he has been hit. Even if you are hit, you can still fight back. That's not just bullshit either. The kind of man that I want in my command is just like the lieutenant in Libya who, with a Luger against his chest, jerked off his helmet, swept the gun aside with one hand and busted the hell out of the kraut with, with his helmet. Then he jumped on the gun and went out and killed another German before they knew what the hell was coming off. And all of that time, the man had a bullet through his lung. That's a real man. George S. Patton, General. Now, there's a lot of other things he said in this speech with foul language, four-letter words, was not, remember, this speech is to the men of the army, not the women. And as such, he said these things. He closes out by saying, there is one great thing that you men will all be able to say after the war is over and you come home once again. You may be thankful that 20 years from now, when you're sitting on your fireplace with your grandson on your knee and you and he asked you, what did you do in the Great World War II? You won't have to <coughs> cough, shift him over to your other knee and say, well, your granddaddy shoveled shit in Louisiana. No, sir. You can look at him straight in the eye and say, Son, your granddaddy rode with the great third army and the son of a goddamn bitch named George Patton. That is all. So speech is important. This is why I've played and read George Patton's speeches. Scandalous as they were during the Second World War. He fought on, carried on, and had millions cheering him all the way there. But it was a different sentiment than it is today. And now, the socialist Bolshevik media says nothing about General Maxine calling out the army of hate. There's even question, uh, as we know now, that non, that a guilty verdict went out, not what the media was kind of pushing the not guilty, because of course they would love to see America burn. But uh, the officer was found guilty of the George Floyd case on three counts. He was found guilty guilty so we had the president Uncle Joe he put in his two cents all kinds of things that before a trial is ended not too smart but nevertheless they did it and they even sent one of their fearless generals to the front lines to carry out the orders and she did and people listened. So what happens now? Well, they sentenced the cop to whatever amount of time, or the ex-cop, and everybody forgets about him and forgets about George. George Floyd, they forgot about George a long time ago anyway. But, you know, now they can put this on the side. Look at the media right now. Instead of concentrating on the case and the guilty verdict, they're already on the next book, on the next chapter, and that is the new police reform. This gives more precedence that the police reform should be passed. 
because it's all about what they want. It's all about control. Don't fool yourself that it's about something else other than control. And that's what the Bolshevik states of woke is looking for. So what's the story with the police reform that's coming fast? It's coming as subtle as a freight train towards you? Well, one of the ticket items that's got everything held up is qualified immunity. And we know that the mayor of the city of New York, Bozo the Clown himself, I don't want to insult Bozo like that. I take that back. The Bozo, he has removed qualified immunity for NYPD officers. Now, qualified immunity allows, it's like a safeguard in suing personally an officer. So the city you can go around it, but not personally the officer because they're carrying out the commission of their duties. Whether they're right, wrong, or indifferent, they're still under that pretext at the time they do whatever act. They're wearing uniform, they were hired, they passed all tests to get to that position. Now that they did something wrong in the commission, yes, you deal with that. But they want to give qualified immunity. So you know what that's going to do? It's going to trigger the lawyers. The lawyers, the lawyers are going to go out. Every police encounter in America, there will be a lawsuit. The lawyers, they're going to get you. The, the lawyers, we're not going to call our lawyers. That's the game. The Bolsheviks' intent is clear on police reform. Killing qualified immunity allows them to sick and bite every police officer that comes up in any incident anywhere in America. They get the lawyers. They sue here, sue there, sue, the ever, sue everywhere. They're making their big move to create one national police force. It's easier to control one than 18,000. That's why they want to do it. All right, so i got a great clip I want to play uh, next. And I I really, uh, I'm going to probably make this a little clip later on. Um, But it's from the movie that was almost the, well, the autobiography of Lieutenant Colonel Hal Moore. And we, a lot of us loved the movie when it first came out. I think it was very well done. And We Were Soldiers is the name of the movie. I believe it was in 2000, 2001, 2002, somewhere in that area. Maybe even early. I'm just guessing around that time. And the movie was great in its entirety, brought us back to the era of the Vietnam War. But there's a section on there that the Sergeant Major, a Sergeant Major by the name of Basel Plumley, he basically tells all his men, just as the enemy's about to attack in Vietnam, he basically tells uh, the men to prepare to defend themselves. But it's not the same when I say it. Let's put him on so you can hear him say it. Gentlemen, prepare to defend yourselves. Great, great movie. We were soldiers. So in closing remarks that I have is General Maxine came out of nowhere She received her orders from the Bolshevik stakes of woke. And she was handed the black box with the reset button on it. And she landed. She spoke to the troops. And they were at the ready to cause havoc and chaos all around America. Like they did in the Summer of Love 2020. Maxine 
got plenty of air cover from Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. They didn't see it as a very, that's no big deal. Words matter, but unfortunately in the Bolshevik states that we live in, it only matters for patriots. They're the ones that need to fear what they say. They're the ones that need to fear what they do. They need to fear who they are. In such short time that this evil empire has taken the helm of this country, we have seen nothing but evil, havoc, and chaos. And we're still in the honeymoon phase. It's going to be a rough ride, and we all know it. And there are many that are cheering it on, saying, good, I'm glad that they're going to do the reset. We need to change the way America looks, feels, and acts. Well, the, during the Second World War, there were many people that were outraged about George Patton and the general's speech attitude. And there were many in the military that were in charge of General Patton that also wanted to move him out of the way. We'll say that. His orders to go from North Africa to Sicily, he was not supposed to take the main section of Messina in Sicily where their allied forces were going to land and capture the island of Sicily. No, that was for the English to do. But we all know that good old George Patton, blood and guts, he did it his way. And Although there were many above him that were trying to get him out of the way or remove him, the Secretary of War at the time, which is classified as the Secretary of Defense today, wrote a letter to General Eisenhower saying, there is no way that we can continue and win this war without General George Patton. And as such, his antics, what he did, what he said, was secondary to the package that he displayed and gave America. He gave America a victory. Maxine now is trying to deliver a victory to the Bolshevik states. You see, the intent is, if it's not guilty, burn it all down. If it is guilty, well, then we'll push our agenda on police reform, which is really baloney because it's not police reform, it's police destruction. Reset button, and for them to do it in the image that they want. That's control, and that's how the Bolshevik states are rolling. So what's up next? We are going to go out and we're going to send out another signal calling for Wonder Woman so we can have our episode that's coming up, OT Off-Duty Monitoring, And that will be episode 213. Look at it from the perspective of a supervisor, the subordinate that's underneath that just can't stop working overtime. So that's what we're going to be discussing on episode 213 with the wonderful, lovely Wonder Woman. All right, like I said at the beginning of the episode, we're going to wrap up this one with the word of the week. So to wrap up episode 212, we are going to read from the book of Psalms, 
uh, chapter 23, verse 1 and 2, and it states, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides still waters. You can also learn more about what I've read on RaiderCopNation.com, section on there that says a wall. Once you click on that, it will take you to the rest of all these messages that we have on Raider Cop Podcast. As always, it is my honor and pleasure to be your host on Raider Cop Podcast. Continue to pray for yourself because without you in the game, we have nothing. Continue to pray for your family, your community, for the law enforcement agencies that serve you. And most important, continue to pray for the United States of America. This is Alpha Mike, and I'm out.